Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the recording. You guys are gonna hear this one more time, but these are the two files that I want you guys to start out with tonight. So typically at the beginning of class, there's an exercise posted and I say download these files. Tonight, I actually want you to open up the files you worked on. So here's the Art Space Sky from last week, and then here's the Vila Savoy. So from what I see on this row, there's lots of stuff going on that isn't Vila Savoy or Art Space. Hi, Derek. Yes, sorry. What, sometimes, thank you. A lot of times when I am recording, I assume that I am also projecting. But there we go. So here we go. Okay, that wasn't the last time. Here's the Vila Savoy, and here is the Art Space exercise. That's what we're going to be working on tonight. <clears throat> and I'm going to pull up the exercise so you can see hopefully what we're going to get to tonight and then we're going to talk about the rubric as well. So again, this is just the exercise and your assignment is basically this exact same thing, but you're going to use a different building and I'm going to have you insert one more object. So to start, what we're going to be looking at is comparing file sizes um, between two different files. One of the first assignments that you guys did was to go online, go on social media, and even your phone, and look at different file sizes and compare those two. And that knowledge is really going to help tonight because we are going to see what happens, these are the next two lines down, what happens when you duplicate layers from file to file. Um, <clears throat> when you go from an image that's really big that has a lot of pixels into an image that's smaller, that image is going to end up looking huge. Or if you go the other way, that image that's really small going into the large file ends up being really small. Um, Mickey, right? Yes. All right, welcome. That's fine. I will see you at 7.50 on Wednesday. <laughs> okay, fine, 7.52 to make up for the eight minutes you lost tonight. Um, so we'll see what happens when you go between different file sizes. And then after we get comfortable duplicating within a file, we're going to look at how to go between files. Because right now what we've done is we've learned how to isolate a whole bunch of things. And now we're going to learn how to take those different objects and layers and pull them into different files so we can start mixing it up. Does that one work? No? Okay, good. Um, and then after that, Part of our class, although it's called Photoshop, is to get to a point where our images don't look Photoshop. So if you think about our first class that we went together, there's a giant Naima out on the plaza. Part of it will be, tonight we'll learn how to transform or resize, scale things down to the appropriate scale. And then eventually, in the next coming weeks, we're going to learn how to work with light. So right now, it's how to mask. That's what we've gone over, how to make it look like things haven't been cut out. Tonight will be how to start mixing those files together, rescale and resize them so they look proportionate to one another. And then the next step of that will be how to match the lighting so that if you have a really bright image, how does it mix in with like maybe a, a duller image, um, playing with levels and things like that. Depending on how things go tonight, we might introduce that topic on Wednesday, but that topic isn't set to be introduced until next week, so we'll just see how it goes. And then after that, we'll get into not crazy things, but learning how to scale and skew things, um, and then how to change color. That's where we're going. But again, for tonight, these are the things that I'm looking to hit. So with that, did everybody have some time to open up art space? I want to start with this one. Okay. I'll pause for just... So in your art space file, you might still have a layer called test, right? And that test, we just threw it in so we could kind of see the outline of what would have been the sky. Go ahead and turn that off for me so that basically we just see the checkered or transparent background. So remember, when you see this gray and white checker, if you were to print it, would it actually print? No, so this is just to indicate that there's a transparent background so that if we were to put something behind it, it would allow to show through. I want all of you guys to hop into Google Chrome. Do you guys see what the icon looks like here? 
So you guys might not have it here, but if you hit the Windows button in D, that takes you to the desktop. And you should be able to see a shortcut, at least on your desktop, that looks like that. So for you, I think it's Apple D to get to your desktop. Um, and the reason why I want you guys to go to Google Chrome is so that'll just kind of ensure that what I'm looking for and finding is what you're looking for and finding. Uh, hopefully when we do an image search, it all um, comes up the same. So again, hopping back to Photoshop, the first thing that we're going to do, or at least where we're trying to go, is find a better sky to fill in here. If you remember before we masked it, it was taken on a really dreary, drab, gray day, probably in February. It's gonna be here before we know it. And we want it to look like a brighter sky. So to start off, just go ahead and type in the word sky. And let's go to images. And let's grab the first thing that comes up and kind of compare it to what we have. Do you guys see this image here? The little um, description of it says, why is the sky blue? Do you guys see that? Let's just go for the first one. Now, there's several ways to download. I typically always click on the image first, and then from here, you can right click and go to save image as or save link as. Um, let's see, Trey, when you were in Kevin's class, did he show you how to work on your network folder? Or have you worked on your network folder already? Okay, perfect. So what I had everybody do on the first day, um, and actually, Mickey, we haven't talked about this. You might need to get your, a oh, few people didn't have access to it. You do? Okay, good. So we just made a folder called um, 1350 Fall of 19. And since this is the third week, I'm going to make a new folder and call it 03. It'll kind of correspond with our Canvas assignments. So, I mean, if you guys already have a way of being really organized, do it your way. But if you're a student who just saves everything in one folder and just keeps renaming it final, final, pre-final, final, final, last one, then you can kind of go along with this. Um, I'm just going to save this, uh, the name that it is. And one thing I wanted to check is that it's a JPEG image. There is a new weird image file on the internet. I think it's called a JFIF. Was, is that, does that sound right? And I'm still learning about why that exists, how I can open it, how I can save it. So that conversation will be continued, but we were lucky we got a JPEG to start. And what I'm going to do is after I download it, I'm just going to hop right into Photoshop and open it from inside Photoshop. I haven't set my computer to open up my JPEGs automatically in Photoshop just because at home it's usually a slower open. I almost always have updates. So I will wait here for you guys. And at some point I stopped recording. So while you guys are downloading that, I'm just catching up the people at home who might be watching. We just hopped on to Google, Sky, Images, and the first image that came up was this image, and I saved it in our class folder and opened it up directly in Photoshop. Now, if you are ready, let me know you're ready by having the Sky image open for me, and then I'll know that we're ready to go. Okay, I think we're almost there. And I'm going to pretend you weren't working on homework and that you're following along with me, but it's all good. <laughs> okay. Once you guys have your image, go ahead and go up to image and then image size again. So this is taking us back to, again, that first night of class where we started talking about image sizes. And what we're doing right now is essentially comparing this image size to what the art space size will be. And I don't know if it's my architect brain or whatever it is, but think about it as if it were a room. So the dimensions of the room or the canvas that we're working in right now is about 1,900 pixels by about another 1,000 pixels. I'm just rounding up. 
Um, so we're at about, let's say 2,000 by 1,000. That's the size of the room or the space that we're in. If room or space is too abstract, think about it as the size of the canvas that we're working on. So if you were gonna go to like Michael's or Rules isn't open anymore, Blick, Alt, thank you, Blick Art Supplies, just think of buying uh, you know, one th uh, 2,000 by 1,000 canvas. So there's that. If I go into Art Space, let me go to Image Size again. This canvas is 1,200 by about 900. So is the sky, when we pull it in, is it going to be larger or smaller? Yes, larger. It's going to be a little bit larger, right? And when we are going between file and file, I think it's always better to be larger than smaller because when we shrink down, we're not really losing information. But when we try to sh uh, expand pixels, the only way that I can really imagine it is, have you guys ever seen or like if you can imagine writing something on a rubber band or even like a t-shirt that's really stretchy, if you stretch it too much, you're going to lose what it's supposed to look like. It just gets pixelated um, and hard to read. So in this case, I think that we'll be okay pulling in the cloud. Now, um, before we, actually we're, we're right now, we are gonna skip duplicating within the file and we're just gonna jump to duplicating file to file. Yep, Alex? Say that one more time. So this is about 2,000 by 1,000. But if you go to image, image size, you can see exactly the dimensions of it. Okay. Um, we didn't increase it. We're, what we're doing right now is I just want to take it at face value. What we get off the internet is what we're working with. So what we're gonna do on your background layer, right click for me and go to duplicate layer. Now you might remember in last class, I was showing you guys how to duplicate layers to do your magnetic wands and lassos. And I suggested doing the shortcut where you come and drag down here, remember that? So that works well if you're just wanting to duplicate within the file. If you want to go out of the file, you have to right click. And here is how picky it can be. Um, who was it? I think Mickey, remember you asked me if you could stay in 2018, Photoshop? Okay, yeah. so in 2018, depending on where you click, this menu comes up. So just watch out for that. Like if you're at home and it hasn't been updated, if you do it on the image, you might get another menu versus if you right click on the name. So just watch out for that. It's a little bit different between versions. But what we're looking for is we want to duplicate it. And when it says as, do you see how it says background copy? It's asking what do you want this layer to be named when I duplicate it? So should we name it background? What should it be called? What is it? It's a sky. So let's make things easier on ourselves and just call it what it is. We'll call it a sky. And then here, do you see where it's asking what document do we want to duplicate it in? So if we want to duplicate it in that file and just keep it in the Cumulus Cloud file, we can do that. But this time, we're actually trying to go into what I've called art space. So I don't know what your art space is called but mine is called art space. Yours could be called building exercise, I'm not sure. But this is the file that I want it in. And now when I click on okay, if I come back to art space, you should see that I have background now. So that was pointless. I think, I don't know if I did it twice. Did any of you guys name it Sky and have it stay the name Sky? Mine Yours says background? Yeah, okay, background. well. Bronson, you won the award tonight. Okay, because I have OCD, I'm gonna change this to sky. Again, there's just too many layers for us to be calling them generic things like layer one, layer two, background. In our assignments, in our rubrics, when I ask for layer organization, it can be as simple as just naming your layers. So um, a few of you guys had questions on that last week. How do I, what do you mean by layer organization? For now, it's really just as simple as having the correct names. Now, tell me how to fix my file. I have the building in the sky, but... Drag yep, drag and drop. So remember, whatever is on top is gonna be up front. 
and whatever is at the bottom is going towards the background. You right click it. So go back into your sky, right? And then right click on the layer and go down to duplicate layer. And then when this menu is up, it asks for the destination. Find the file that you want to send it to. Okay. Let's go back to art space. Do you have an extra file there now or an extra layer? Okay. All right, there you go. Um, so now let's talk about, we have, well, okay, that went really quick. Let's just uh, go over it one more time. To duplicate between file to file, what do you guys do? So I'm actually, um, Mike, not Matt, <laughs> I'm going to start with you. Um, tell me, Explain it to me as if I have never used Photoshop before. So what we're going to do, I've, I do this in most of my classes, so if you had classes with me, you know what's coming. But I typically start with one person and we just go around step by step. So I've never seen Photoshop before. Where would you tell me to start? Based on my screen right now. Based on the computer, you have the picture in the other box? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to life as an, as an instructor. Okay, good. We go to my layer menu, and then after that, Abdul Rahman, where do I go from there? I don't know how to duplicate. That's what I'm trying. Duplicate. No, it didn't work. Trey, can you help me out? Right click on it. Yeah, wait, right click on what? The, what, what you wanted. the layer. Yep, so right click on the layer. Good. So now, Abdul, I'm going to come back to you. I right clicked, and now. Duplicate layer, thank you. And now from here, I'll stay within this little quad. Connor, tell me where to go from here. So to get it, we create another file. We'll go to the destination. Yep. And change the destination to the file you want to get to in the art space. Uh-huh. All right. And then, Alex, how can I check to see if that worked? Yes, so I skipped ahead. Yes, I did do that part. So I'm in that file, but I don't know if it worked. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep, so now I have sky, and I also have another background. Good. So that's how you duplicate from file to file. You use your layer menu, and you right-click to duplicate. Let me pause real quick, but let's just help when it's, when it's on task. Okay, now that we have a sky in here, the thing about a sky is that it almost always can look right. The thing that might look off is if we had like an airplane and the airplane looked huge. But clouds can be any size. So truthfully, we could be done with this if we wanted to be. But what I wanted to hang out on and talk about a little bit more is transforming and resizing objects within a file. So now I've got this sky layer. And again, it's a little bit abstract, but let's see if we can resize it. Now this is going all the way back to that first night of class, a little bit of the second night. Um, how would we quickly resize or transform the sky? Derek? Uh, control T under transform. Yeah, so we're gonna go into Control T, and actually with new versions of um, Acrobat, we don't even have to do free transform. We can just grab the toggle points and move. Now, Derek, let me ask you. So with my version right now, I'm hitting Control T and nothing is happening. Can you or anybody in your quad help me um, troubleshoot? What's wrong with my cursor? Okay, so the class means that it's not necessary. Yes. Where should I be 99% of the time? What mode? V. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. So first I want to be in V. Good. And then now that I'm in V or in move, so Mickey and Trey, you guys are new. We always want to be in V 99% of the time. That way we're not accidentally painting on something or moving, transforming something we don't want to. Once we're in V, now we can do Control T. Let me, the reason why I'm zooming out is I know that this is going to be big. So 
So let me go here to my layers. I'm doing control T, nothing is happening. And I know that nothing is happening, but let me have, let's see, Mickey, do you feel comfortable troubleshooting me at this point? Because Derek told me exactly what to do and he was right. But you help me, I've never seen it before. Part of learning is to help help me and help others troubleshoot. So do you see something in my layer menu or even Peke, something or even Hue that I can change to help this work so I can transform this guy? <laughs> okay, right now I want to see how big the sky is. So I want to resize the sky. I don't know if it's, like if this is my workspace, I don't know if my sky is this much bigger or just barely bigger. Layer? Good. Yeah, I don't even need to move it up. So let me just tell you what I'm trying to do. Right now, what layer is active on my screen? Art space. What layer am I trying to transform? The sky. So I want to click on the sky, and then when I hit Control T, now do you guys see a bigger image in the background? Okay, so at this point, I can grab these toggle points. So Derek, this is what I was talking about. No more free transform. There's so much of that tedious stuff that's gone. You can make it bigger, smaller. Um, and again, as long as the resolution looks okay, I'm okay. Do you see right now the width and the height of my sky is only at 70%? So that 70% means 70% of the original file. So because this image is so much bigger, I could keep making it much, much bigger before it even gets to 100%. So those are important numbers to look at because if you ever take an image and make it 400 times the size, what do you think will start happening to that image? Remember, think about something. Yep, it's going to look really pixelated. And again, we don't want it to look photoshopped. We don't want something crystal clear and then something that looks pixelated on top of it. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do, grab these toggle points, move the clouds around until it looks right to you, okay? When it looks right, all you need to do is hit enter and there's your sky, right? After you do that, I want you guys to go back online and find me at least two or three other sky backgrounds to bring in. So show us some options, maybe a nighttime one, a different cloudy one, but just pull in some other skies and go through those same steps again. Compare image sizes, like the canvas sizes to make sure it's gonna pull in correctly. Um, duplicate it the way that we talked about. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause and check the image size just in case. So what about, um, so checking the image size, what about just downloading and opening in Photoshop? You guys feel okay with that? Mm -hmm. There's a couple different ways. So what I typically do is go to File Open. The other thing that you can do, depending on how you've set up your computer here or at home, I don't have my images open in Photoshop by default. If you look at my computer, it's still set to open in Photos. But if you want to set JPEGs to always open with Photoshop, again, you can always go to right click, open with, and then if you go to choose another app, even though Photoshop is already there, what that allows you to do is click on this little icon that says always use this app. So if you want to um, change your presets to always open up JPEGs. But either way works. Um, and then once you guys opened it, did you guys remember what menu you needed open to duplicate? Yeah, layer menu, right? Okay. And then to actually get to the duplicate part, what did you have to do in your layer menu? Yep. Go to right click and then duplicate layer. Good. So that's how you go between file to file. With the new clouds that you guys, or the new skies that you pulled in, did they come in large or small compared to, so how many of you guys got larger images? Okay, 
Did anybody download something that was smaller than Art Space? Okay. Were you guys able to stretch it out to where it didn't get pixelated, or did you have to go back online and get something else? Okay, so the stretchy part, you would click on the layer that you want to transform, and then hit Control T for transform. I'll come take a look. That doesn't sound. Do one thing for me. Hit Control D. You might have something selected that you don't mean to have selected. And now try Control T. So Control D to deselect. Did that do it? Yeah. You just had like a little tiny pixel selected. Okay. Um, if you guys feel comfortable with this, here is the next thing that I want you guys to do in this art space file. What I want you guys to do is, let me see if it's written in the instructions. Let me just make sure of this. Okay, that one I haven't published yet, so hold tight. We will upload this one in just a minute. But what I want you guys to do is to go find, in addition to the sky that you brought in, go back online and find an object, person, car, whatever it is, but have it be something believable that you can add to this picture. So to do that, remember you have to go online, save it, mask it, duplicate it, transform it. Do I sound like a, a Daft Punk song, anybody? Anybody know that song? Derek's not happy. He doesn't like that song. If you think it's a Kanye West song, you're wrong. It's a Daft Punk. <laughs> okay. So that will, I want, we, I said that we were going to hang out in transformations and masking for a bit, just to make sure you're comfortable. That's how we're going to do it. So if you know that you need large image sizes, I'm just going to pull your attention again real quick. Um, under Google search, most any searches, if you go to settings, sorry, tools, size comes up and just go to large. And I think by default, a large um, size has to be something that's close to a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. So you can see I get up to 6,000 by 4,000. That's crazy. But that'll help kind of narrow it down. That way you don't fall in love with something you can't use. That happens to me all the time. Okay, so again, tools, and then file size large. All right, let me go ahead and record this part. So what we've been working on right now is under your assignments, under exercises, under 03 art space, um, part two background, and um, before you guys turn that in, just make sure that you have, so here I put sky reads well and is not pixelated. I put two times there because you guys have been, you guys will have two skies in the PSD format. You will have three, but one of them we did together. So it's really just the two that you did on your own that I'll be looking at. So make sure that an object has been included, it's been masked carefully and resized carefully. And really everything I saw tonight as I was walking around looked good. Like e UFOs, they looked awesome. Dragons, eagles, whatever. I really think that they all looked okay. One thing that's going to be different that you guys haven't seen before, did you guys notice that I included a JPEG format tonight? So what I want to do is to also see your work in a final form. Because sometimes when people turn in their PSD files, there will be a lot of layers turned off, and I don't know if that's on accident or on purpose. So make sure you get your image exactly how you want to turn it in. Okay, we can practice it right now. And what I'd like you guys to do is to also go up to File, and then Save As. And then after you do that, by default, come down to where it says save as file type. Do you guys see that right there? And by default, it's a Photoshop PSD. And I'd like you guys to change that to a JPEG. There's three of them. We just need the first one. 
So I'll hang out there for just a moment. So again, for your assignment to get full credit for everything, you need the PSD and the JPEG. If you turn in one but not the other, it's kind of like an all or nothing. And for the JPEG, just pick the sky that you think looks best. So I know we did two skies, but you only need to turn in one version of the sky. So practice that before you go so that if you have any questions, I can help you with it. So we're thinking we save the image. We're going to send you the image twice, but one yep. for JPEG. Exactly. Yep. The thing that's nice about the JPEG is I can actually write on it and mark it up and send it back to you. Whereas the PSD, I can't put comments on it for you guys to see. So I'll look at the PSD just for the file structure, but then put my comments on the JPEG. Um, is it bad to have your test masking later? No, nope, that's totally fine. Even if it's off, it's OK. okay. Yep. Um, Alex, did you have a question? OK, all right. So that's your first exercise for tonight. Let me come back here. Oh, Abdi, did you have a question yeah, on this so one? Like yep, so file, save as. And then do you see where it says save as type? So if you pull down here, there's three JPEG. You just need the plain one, not the 2000 or the stereo. All right. Oh, you know, I skip right past that. Let me go through. Sometimes I do things automatically without thinking. Let me put them, put this in the right folder. So I'm just going to do save. And then for here, I oh, by default, it, it, it'll just go with whatever the file size is. So if it's like a medium file size, it'll save it as medium. I always change it up to maximum. That's the only thing I change. So for now, that's just fine and then I click OK. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm on autopilot up here. <laughs> um, so let me go back to the other assignments just to make sure that they're clear. I think it was this tab, no. I lost my screen, sorry guys. Uh, let's do Okay, so I was right here. So that's the first one, and I think most everybody should be ready to turn that in, or within five minutes of turning that in. Now, when you finish that one up, there is another exercise that I have in here. With this one, though, um, you have to be careful with the background, because not only do I want a new sky, and let me clarify this on the assignment, I want it to be a whole new scene that looks like Utah. So this building, the Villa Savoy, is in France. And I've never seen it, but I would love to see it one day. Um, and I don't know when I'm going to get to France. So until then, you guys are going to bring it to me so I can just do a day trip. So instead of just adding a sky, think about adding Utah scenery for me, whatever that is. So. Take a look online, find really good high resolution image photos and pull in a, a Utah scene for me and then place that image. So remember what I'll be thinking about here when I'm grading it is the resolution of the background, how well did you resize the Vila Savoy to fit, does it look like it's floating in space, does it look like it's well grounded? So keep that in mind. And I would also like you to add just one object for this one. Add something that represents Utah well. So if you think of Utah and you had to put Utah in an object, what would that be, right? And then add that to the picture too. So now there's going to be a Utah background. There's going to be the building in France and then an object that you think represents Utah. So. That could be abstract, whatever you think. Any questions on that one? Okay, yeah. now the last one, so again, these two are considered your in-class exercises. You might get both of them done tonight, but they're both due um, in a week. Now this one right here, um, the Salk Institute, uh, this one there will be, you have to take the sky 
So just add another sky to it. It doesn't have to be a whole city or background the way that we did the Salk or sorry, the Vila Savoy. So just a new sky in that one. Add the paraglider. So you guys have hopefully already um, masked the paraglider and that should just be ready to go to duplicate into it. And then in addition to that, I want two more objects and those objects are completely up to you. So whether they're objects in the sky, objects in the plaza, that's up to you. And then I'm also letting you guys do a third object of your choice if you want to include that. Now, the third object of your choice, it should be a new object, not something that you borrowed from your other assignments, it's just extra practice. Okay. And then the same with all of them, PSD and JPEG for those. Okay. Any questions about what's due? Okay, I'm gonna give, the rest of class time is for you guys to work, so I'll stop this for now. Yes. Um, I'm going to be using that to write on it and critique because the PSD you're, you're going to do both from now on so what I the way that I grade I will look at the PSD to make sure everything's organized and that the layer names are there and then let's say that something is transformed too big if I don't give you the points for the um, like the resizing like if I take this down to three points Rather than leaving a comment, I will actually mark up your work so you can see what I'm talking about. All right. See you, Mike. Well, should I bring it on 